Alright, technically it's called Flying Fortress, but whatever, it's a sky castle. I'll call it by whatever synonyms I want to call it by. Anyway, first enemy is up. These are recolors of the Sphinx enemies we fought earlier, but these guys have a new ability called Poison Darts. It's a party attack- oh, hey, look, they're using it right now. It's a party attack that has the chance to cause, you guessed it, poison. And Manticores really, really like using it. But of course, if you have high evasion or ribbons or anything like that, these guys are no big deal at all. They're very easy to clean up. See? Well, okay, it's taken multiple turns, but still, nothing to them. Look at all that nothing. Anyway, the Flying Fortress itself is a very simple sort of dungeon. Well, simple layout-wise, anyway. There are a ton of items to get, though, so... It's gonna take a while if you're going after all of them. Ah, and here's some Black Knights. Remember how I said they could be difficult earlier? Well, this is pretty much where they're difficult. Because of their high HP and high attack, they can be threatening when in large groups. Not the most threatening, but uh, actually, they can do some pretty big damage to you. They are probably some of the more threatening enemy groups within the dungeon. Actually, they pretty much are because I can't really think of anything else that's threatening off the top of my head, so these guys are pretty much the worst. So if you can rinse them like this, you're pretty much good. Also, in the NES version, these guys, they're called Badman. I'm completely serious about that. That is absolutely brilliant. Ooh, and we got a sword. Okay, so they can randomly do drop the Deathbringer. Wait, what? Wait, seriously? There's a sword that the Knight class can't use? I completely forgot about that. Holy crap, there's a sword that... Wow. Okay, well, now I'm dumbfounded. Vance, you're not perfect, I'm sorry. Okay, well, anyway, here's pretty much the most lazy design for uh, yeah, the elemental enemies. So, basically, we have the really, really simplistic sprite of the water elementals, except they recolored it green. That, without a doubt, is the laziest recolor ever. Because now it's just a green tornado. Whoop-de-doo. I believe the uh, Naga enemy is also new. This guy isn't new, though. We fought him back in the ice cave, and he was just as pathetic as he is now. Except now we're tougher, so we can take him down even faster. Now, let's see. The Razor, I believe, is a sore... Okay, it casts Scourge. That's... That's useful in a way, it's just got some very low attack power, so I'm not using it. Because I got some really good swords. Including one that I got off a bunch of knights. Oh, sorry, bad men. Though, despite being called bad men, they don't wear pink shirts. That's weird. Anyway, more, I'm guessing, useless items. Healing Helm, Gill, Protect Ring, that's vaguely useful. Actually, I was consider, yeah, considering uh, actually using some items or armor on Max and Death Knights. First off, they were called Evil Man in the NES version, and that's also pretty amazing. Second off, they can cast some pretty powerful magic. I believe they can cast the Aga spells? Is that it? Uh... Oh wait, no, I'm pretty sure they can cast some instant kill spells and also flare, so they can actually be pretty dangerous. But, I don't think they cast all that much magic, they do it pretty infrequently, so... You're not going to get too damaged by them, especially since they appear alone most of the time. You should be fine when going up against them. Oh boy, here's a big room. Anyone want to appear? Ooh, diamond gloves. I think I already have those, but anyway, yeah. So, the Flying Fork. Okay, first off, Stone Golems. Pretty sure we've actually fought these guys before, but if we haven't, now you know they exist. So, Flying Fortress. I believe I've stated before that I really, really like Sky Dungeons. Why? I don't know. I'm kind of afraid of heights, but there's just something so fascinating by castles in the sky and airships and all that, and this definitely is not an exception. It looks really, really cool, and 
while the design of the uh, whole area is kind of simplistic, I still like it. It's a fairly linear dungeon, and actually, you know what? That's a third ribbon. I think I might actually equip that on uh, Max, but my one qualm with this dungeon is actually the music. It's not terrible, it's kind of ominous, but it's just nothing spectacular. At the very least, there's no beeping, so that's pretty nice. Ah, black robe and... oh, white robe's here also. Alright, these are uh, pretty useless uh, armors. Yeah, that's... Uh, 10 off from defense, but they do cast spells. Alright, so as you saw, the uh, white robe casts Invisera, and I believe the black robe might cast an Aga spell? Might be like Blizzaga or something? Maybe just an R spell? I'm not quite sure. I don't exactly remember, but anyway, Earth Medusas. There's nothing really spectacular about them because they're basically just upgraded Medusas. The other ones could use gaze, so can these guys. They've got no other tricks up their sleeves, and they're very easy to take down, so... If you've got ample protection from stone, you should be good. Anyway, let's just move on. There's actually one more item to get on this floor, but it's one you're definitely gonna pick up. Now, what could this be? I don't actually wonder. It's adamantite! We're definitely going to want to take this back to the Dwarven Blacksmith, but of course not just now. We'll save that for later. Not too much later, though, because I want him to make me a really good sword. Alright, Flying Fortress 3rd floor. Uh, I believe this is a 5-floor dungeon? It's either 5 or 6, but uh, this is actually fairly important. Wait, the Chaos Shrine? first dungeon in the game? But I explored the whole thing! There couldn't possibly be anything more there. Hmm. Still, though, this fancy little animation is showing me that all the points just connect to the Chaos Shrine. Well, we'll have to check that out later. But first, let's get attacked by this bronze guy. Now, these are the guys I was talking about back at the Mirage Tower. The uh, Guardians are still pathetic. Soldiers can do that. And, in case you needed a comparison, there you go. Guardians, they suck. Soldiers, they're good. But soldiers are a bit more rare than Guardians, so you probably won't run into too many of them. And apparently now, these guys got a recolor. Now... They're not really too interesting, but uh, if I remember correctly, they are called Man Cat in the NES version. Which, again, is brilliant. I, I don't know why, but apparently this was just the Man Dungeon for all the Man enemies. Not even Man Lee enemies, no. Just the enemies with Man in their name. And also Medusa. Wait, this is a normal Medusa. Or Medusa. That's kind of lame, actually. But yeah, now they're called Rock Shiat. Wait. Rock, Rakshasha, Rakshasa. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right, but nonetheless, again, they're not really threatening at all. Don't think they have anything uh, too good spell-wise. Yeah, I can't think of anything they really do off the top of my head, so they are still just torsos with heads just sort of sticking out without a neck, and also some sort of weird arm ponytail. And I was kind of hoping that Thor's hammer was going to kill him, because that would have been hilarious. Getting killed by my white mage. And look at that, both computers both have the same little... Uh, messages. I'm guessing both of those were just typed out by Tiamat. Yeah, all the computers say this, I believe. So I'm guessing, given that Tiamat's the only one who's been living up here for the longest time, that she was probably the one who wrote that. He's just typing out on those weird square computer things, going all, ah, look at that, ah, no weaknesses, that's me, oh yeah. Because Tiamat's probably a big dumb jerk. But hey, we're gonna be taking care of her soon enough. Ooh, treasure! I want all of this, and I hope it's not useless. It's gonna be useless, isn't it? Clothes! Oh, come on, now you're just making fun of me. Okay, the Protect Cloak, though, that is very useful. I believe, uh... 
Oh wait, no, it's a shield, isn't it? Yeah, it's a shield. Protect Cloak, very good. And also, as I said, I actually decided to equip the uh, Ribbon and Protect Ring on off-screen. Because, you know what? Max isn't getting that good a uh, Protect bonus off of it. So I figured I might as well just start giving him armor, right? It can't really hurt him by this point. I'm not giving him weapons, though, because he does not need weapons. Those definitely hold him back. So I guess his long, long streaking streak has come to an end. Well, it was fun while it lasted, but eh, you gotta wear clothes sometime. Or in his case, a ribbon and a ring. The clothing will come later. Okay, Sasuke's Blade, I don't think I have any use for. Pretty sure that's just for ninja, or the ninja class, rather. Anyway, this is actually the last main floor of the dungeon. It's sort of a maze. Oh, look, Vampire Lords. These guys are also very weak, but, uh... It's a maze, but not exactly. Basically, it's an area that has just these identical rooms. But the thing is, they actually loop around, so by going down here, I believe left two and then down two, you can actually get to the exit pretty darn quickly. See? It's right there. This is a very easy room. You just need to know that it loops. But this is it, guys. This is the last walk. You just had to interrupt me, didn't you? First it's the Sea Shrine, now it's this. Thanks a lot, guys! Alright! Well, thanks for making the walk anticlimactic. Well, let's get this started. If you leave any of the, uh... Fiends alive by this point, she actually won't mention them when she talks, so that's actually kinda neat. You had to fight Lich first, but then the rest of them can come in any order. Yeah, that ain't happening, buddy. Let's do this thing. Now, Tiamat is kind of hyped up a bit too much. She's pretty much more or less implied to be the strongest of the four fiends, but she's honestly one of the weakest. Yeah, she has no elemental weaknesses, because uh, fire, ice, electricity, they won't work on her. However, you can actually one-hit kill her, I believe. At the very least, in the NES version, there was a spell called, uh, it was Bane, correct? That actually had the chance to kill her in one hit. In this version, she's actually weak to poison, so that Vorpal s- er, wait, no, was it the Vorpal Sword? I believe it was. Whichever one casts Forge, that can actually be pretty useful in this fight. Not sure if it's a one-hit kill, or it'll just do a lot of damage, but either way, I'm not gonna use it, because I don't want to be too cheap, because... Despite the fact that I'm not going to use it, I'm still going to have an easy time. I don't need to use Tiamat's weaknesses against her. Because, you know, buffs. That's, that's pretty much how you win every fight in this game. Or at the very least, this version of the game. And this time I'm actually going to use Invisera and Proterra, rather than using the single version of the spells like I did earlier for some reason. I guess I was just dumb. Poison Gas can, of course, poison you, but unlike Poison Darts, it actually does do damage to you. Not nearly as bad as Poison uh, Gas can be in some other games, Cough Cough, Final Fantasy 4 DS, but it does do actually a pretty surprising amount of damage, so you should sort of watch out for it. Just make sure to keep healed, which, you know, <laughs> isn't exactly the most sage advice. I'm, I'm pretty sure you could just talk to anyone and they'll say, yeah, you should probably stay at full health. That's probably a good idea. Other than that, Tia doesn't... Tia Matt, rather, doesn't really have that much going for her. She does have Thunderbolts, but, uh, I don't think she has... Actually, wait, no, she has Blaze and Ice Storm, and... What do you know, just as I say Ice Storm, she does Ice Storm, but yeah, basically she has all three sort of... Not really upgraded magics, they're basically any enemy-only magic, but, uh, yeah, she has all three elemental magics of that sort of thing. Party. Wow. See what I mean when I sh say she's the weakest? She's down already. I'm still describing what she can do, and then she goes and dies on me. Well, that was the last fiend, everybody. It's over. The last crystal is going to be restored once we just, uh, all step out. Hold up the crystal like this, 
And boom! World restored. We're the best. That's totally the end of the game. Of course, then again, we should probably check out the Chaos Shrine. The game did sort of imply that would be important at the very least. And, of course, the last bonus dungeon will be opened up by this point. Possibly the least terrible of all four of them, actually. And that... is it! Flying Fortress is done! A pretty neat fortress, actually. I, I like the dungeon. It does throw a lot of enemies at you, though. There are a lot of encounters and a lot of useless treasure, but hey, I got a few good things out of it. And of course, it's a castle in the sky, I always like those. But, next time, of course, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Remember how I said we wouldn't be going to the bonus dungeons earlier on in the game? Well, guess what time it is?